there's just a lot of interest in wolves. You know, they're a well-studied animal, but uh, people always want to know, you know, how many are here and where do they go and what happens to them? How big an area do they use? Mike Schrage has been the wildlife program manager for Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa for three decades. For the past eight years, he's been tracking wolves on the reservation. The primary part of my study is aimed at the adult wolves. And, and so I catch and put tracking collars on the adult wolves. Um, and then uh, uh, members of the pack will show me in the spring where the dens are located. We've had a real good collaboration in recent years with the 1854 Treaty Authority uh, that's doing a pup survival study. Middle and high schoolers get to partake in this study. This is my third year working with Mike. I started in seventh grade. Wolves are just a really cool animal. One early Tuesday morning, Mike met with members of the 1854 Treaty Authority, kids, and a parent chaperone to search for a wolf den. No promises about what we find. Finley and JR have been on uh, fruitless wolf den hunts before, so they know that we could strike out. She moved the den over the weekend, um, which is a whole lot better than moving it last night, which has happened to us before. Um, so I have an idea where to go to look. Getting a pretty good signal off in this direction, which is basically the direction of her den. We hiked about a half mile, guided by the mother's tracking device. Once we got within like 100 yards of the den, we spread out, all put gloves on, and then went towards where we thought the den was. This den is near the Cloquet Forestry Center on the Fond du Lac Reservation and had seven cubs in it. Really uh, it was a hole in the ground, which is I wasn't expecting that, in the, uh, given that she was out in the middle of a, a spruce and cedar swamp. She had found a little bit of a high ground and dug a hole in there. Pups were tucked down inside. This time, for a change, there was a back entrance to the den, and when we showed up at the front entrance, all the pups ran out the back entrance. Um, that's, that was a first for me, and we had a you know, little bit of excitement um, you know, chasing four-week-old pups through the woods and rounding everybody up. Finley, unload your pup with somebody. Here, give your second one to Easton. Come with us and help look. Can you take both? Here, okay. Ah! Parker, you got two. They... Time is kind of fun where you get to see all these little puppies. <laughs> you can put them like that, running around, and they can be calm, and some of them can be feisty. Whew, one of them pooped. <laughs> Once the pups were calm, data collection began. Microchipping them, measuring them, weighing them, putting collars on them so we can track them and find more information about them in the future. Mm -hmm. Bigger, 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 and then this last tab. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So just silly right here. Comes <laughs> I think the best way to teach kids science um, is, you know, after they've done the lab stuff, is get them out in the field and let them do some field research, um, actually get their hands on an animal. You will have to stretch it a little bit to get it over the head, but try not the best thing in the I learned that it takes a team to put something together because just one person probably couldn't do that. Just because there's so many pups and there's so much stuff to ask you about. Do you want to take him? Yep. Just make it a little easier. Yep. Thank you. Down into the wrist. It's a little bit harder because there's not quite as much skin here. I've as learned that wolves aren't as violent and bloodthirsty as people think they are. 24.5. They can be calm, and most of the time they're looking for their own safety, like most animals do. The students get data from Mike all throughout the school year and use that for science fair projects in the spring. Last year we looked at, well, the overall movement of wolves to a season, but this year we looked at den locations and how they moved due to the size of the litter and how many pups there were and human interaction. I'm hoping to find a way to look at like how the storms and then the different size and type of storms like affect how the wolves move, like if a snowstorm and a rainstorm make them move differently and then a rainstorm that has more rain or less rain, how that affects their movement. As for the wolves in this year's study? There's always the trick, you know, trying to pose it for the perfect shot. right there. The trail cameras show the pups have been moved to a new den where all the tracking signals are still strong for Mike and his team. Now the students participated in four different science fairs this February to May with Mike's Wolf Research. 
Four of them won at the Minnesota Story Mapping Contest and did well in other contests within wow. the science fairs. One of the students is a finalist in 2025 Genius Olympiad Oli International Fair. Parker Sickman from Cloquet High School will attend that this June in Rochester, New York. 